The Mediterranean Basin is one of the planet's most biologically rich and complex regions. The crossroads of Europe, Asia and Africa is considered to be one of Earth's biodiversity hotspots. A vast number of both animal and plant species unique to the region live in its various habitats. The Mediterranean Basin is located in one of the planet's temperate zones. The subtropical climate makes it cold and wet here in winter, hot and dry in summer, and mild and rainy in autumn and spring. Occupied by human beings for more than 8,000 years, the Mediterranean Basin has experienced dramatic changes to its forest and woodland areas. But nevertheless, they are still among the most diverse on the planet. From marshlands to high mountain ranges. From forests of holm and cork oaks to oak and pine forests high up in the mountains. All of them are home to thousands of animal and plant species whose paths cross on their adventures through life. And each one of them has a story to tell. Stories of the Mediterranean Forest the Queen of the Night. The small birds, which during the day have been fluttering around in the forest, take advantage of the scant light that's left to drink or clean themselves before looking for some place safe to spend the night. All day long, they've been searching for food and dodging all kinds of dangers. And now it's time to rest. Nonetheless, for the inhabitants of the Mediterranean forest, Nighttime can be even more dangerous than daytime. They have to be on the alert because the darkness gives cover to many beaks and fangs ready to satisfy their hunger. Many predators prefer to go out hunting when the moon is high in the sky. That's the moment when our protagonist makes her appearance. She's the Queen of the Night. Hidden in the darkness, the Queen of the Night moves with feline agility, even though she isn't a cat. She's an astute carnivore that adapts very well to almost any ecosystem. Besides possessing an excellent sense of smell, her hearing and vision are exceptional. She's extraordinarily agile as she climbs trees and is able to slip inside thick bushes with amazing ease. And one of her favorite foods is the little birds that seek refuge in the vegetation at night.
The queen of the night is the Janet. The Janet is a vivarid that is found in a large part of Africa. Populations of Janets are distributed throughout almost all of Africa, from the northern lands bathed by the Mediterranean Sea to South Africa, and from the Atlantic coast to the Arabian Peninsula. It inhabits a large variety of ecosystems, from leafy forests to tree-dotted savannas, and it can even survive in some areas that are practically deserts. Nonetheless, even though the genet is an African animal, we're not in Africa. We're in southern Europe, on the Iberian Peninsula, where in times gone by, man introduced the genet. The Phoenicians and the Moslems kept genets as semi-domesticated animals to keep their homes and granaries free of rodents and the damage they can do. And when these North African people settled in Southern Europe, they didn't hesitate to bring genets with them. Although genets adapt easily to living with humans, some with wilder instincts escaped, preferring to live in freedom. And so this African species began to colonize Europe. And this colonization still hasn't ended today. Nowadays, we can find genets throughout the Iberian Peninsula, as well as in southwestern France, where they are common south of the Loire River and west of the Rhone. A few genets have even reached northwestern Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, and even Switzerland and southern Germany. Being a warm climate species, the cold has conditioned its spreading into central and northern Europe significantly. Nevertheless, the general rise in temperatures caused by climate change may help the genet to spread rapidly on the old continent. But let's return to the warmth of southern Europe. We're now in the Montes de Toledo, in the central part of the Iberian Peninsula where genets have been living for more than 2,000 years and have adapted perfectly to the ecosystem. Throughout this mountain range, whose highest peaks are all under 1,500 meters in altitude, the predominant ecosystem is the Mediterranean forest. Holm oaks, cork oaks, and Pyrenean oaks, along with fragrant bushes like rock rose, lavender, thyme, and rosemary, blend together in a multicolored puzzle next to the ashes and willows that grow in the most humid areas and along streams. These mountains enjoy a Mediterranean climate, but with a continental effect because of the altitude and of being far from the sea's influence. Long winters and summers with harsh temperatures are the rule here. In contrast, spring and fall are short, although the temperatures are more agreeable. All this means that a large number of mammals find shelter and food in this rich ecosystem all year round. This is also a paradise for birds. The Montes de Toledo are home to spectacularly rich and varied bird life, especially birds of prey. With a wingspan that can surpass two meters, the golden eagle is the most powerful bird of prey in the Mediterranean forest. She is the queen of birds of prey. Although her favorite food is rabbit, this majestic bird can hunt even small hoofed mammals. 
Equipped with large and powerful talons and a sharp beak designed to rip and pierce flesh, the golden eagle is the forest's most feared winged predator. Nevertheless, despite her impressive wingspan, there is another bird of prey that is even bigger than she is and which shares this territory. This bird of prey, which holds the honor of being the largest in Europe, is the Cinereus vulture. With a wingspan of close to three meters and weighing up to 12 kilograms, the Cinereus vulture is a very rare bird in the Mediterranean basin. Today, more than 90% of the European population of this large carrion eater is found on the Iberian Peninsula, where some 2,500 breeding pairs live. There is also a small but stable population in Greece, and in recent years, the species has been reintroduced in France, where it became extinct during the 20th century. Its role, like that of the griffin vulture, is to eliminate the remains of all the animals that die in the Mediterranean forest. From a mere rabbit to the large herbivores that graze in its abundant pasture lands. Fighting for the small pieces of skin cartilage and tendons is normal among Cenarius vultures, which won't hesitate to challenge their peers if that means they can steal such delicious delicacies from their rivals. This is the setting, so full of life and resources, that is home to our protagonist, a young female Janet. Although genets are nocturnal animals, young genets can sometimes be seen in the late evening and even with the day's first rays of sunlight. Because they're inexperienced, they need more time to catch their daily ration of protein. That inexperience also makes them more vulnerable to their greatest predator, the Eurasian eagle owl. With a wingspan of more than one and a half meters and weighing as much as four kilograms, the Eurasian eagle owl is the largest nocturnal bird of prey in the Mediterranean forest. The owl is an apex predator at the top of the food chain. And it's always on the watch for any possible prey in its territory. If a genet makes the mistake of crossing its path, it won't hesitate for a single second before hunting it down, especially if it's a young and inexperienced genet. In spite of our protagonist's youth, 
she lives and faces the forest dangers alone. Genets are solitary animals and only live in groups when they are young. Last spring, after an 11-week gestation period, two baby genets were born inside a fallen and hollow tree trunk. A male and a female, our leading lady. The males only spend a few days living with the females when they're in heat. And after they've mated, they disappear again into the leafy forests, leaving them all the hard work of providing for their offspring. For the next six months, all by herself, the mother takes charge of feeding her kids and teaching them everything they need to know to survive in this dangerous environment. More than half of young Janets die during their first year. As the summer drew to an end, the two siblings followed their instincts and little by little began to venture out of their mother's territory, leaving behind the safety of the family so that each of them could find their own territory to live in. The young male has settled in an old Pyrenean oak grove. The Pyrenean oak's habitat lies in the western Mediterranean basin, France, the Iberian Peninsula, and northern Morocco. This elegant tree is perfectly adapted to the Mediterranean climate. It withstands droughts and freezing temperatures quite well. And thanks to the large number of acorns it produces in autumn, it's the ideal habitat for wild boar and European roe deer, which find in its highly nutritious nuts the food they need to be able to get through the winter. The young male has seen something on the ground that has drawn his attention. Little by little, he slowly descends. Janets are one of the few mammals of their weight that can climb down a tree trunk head first. What attracted his attention was a young roe deer that is resting in the shade of the oak trees.
The little roe deer doesn't have anything to fear from the young Janet. He's too small to represent a threat. The oak grove is also the ideal habitat for numerous smaller sized species. Little mammals, birds, insects and reptiles are quite abundant and they're the food the young male Janet is looking for. Not far from there, our leading lady, the young female Janet, has found her own territory next to a small stream that's protected by a thick gallery forest. The ashes, willows, and alders in some stretches grow closely and thickly thanks to the water that soaks their roots. The tangle of branches and leaves makes it hard for the sunlight to reach the forest floor, keeping the air cool longer. With all this moisture, it's easier to find tender shoots of fresh grass, fruits, nuts, and seeds, as well as a large number of insects. This is the ideal habitat for small birds and mammals, which find food and shelter here. With the last rays of sunlight, our protagonist emerges from her hiding place. She patiently inspects every tree down to the last branch in search of a distracted bird. This little coal tit might be a good order. The coal tit observes its surroundings very carefully, his life depends on it, and he sees the genet approaching. When the little bird feels that the threat is too close, he decides to take off, and our protagonist has no choice but to turn around and try again somewhere else. This time, it looks like she's gotten lucky. Janets always eat their prey beginning with the head. Our leading lady is uneasy and decides to look for some place safer to calmly finish eating. Little by little, she gradually eats every part of the small bird, even the feathers, but she has to be careful because if she's careless, that means losing a tasty bite or two. And she can't afford the luxury of wasting any of the proteins that she had to work so hard to get. Leaving the safety of the tangled branches makes her nervous. She's got to have a good reason to climb down to the ground. She's decided to recover what gravity stole from her. In the oak grove, the young male Janet is also looking for a bite to eat. Tonight, however, he's not going to be as lucky as his sister.
Despite searching and searching, all he can find is a single feather that only manages to entertain him for a few seconds. The young male hasn't managed to find anything to help him quiet his hungry stomach. He'll have to wait for the dark of night when the birds return to their roosts. Something draws his attention. Not far away, some young rabbits are calmly eating in a clearing in the forest. The young rabbits born in the latest litter come out to eat at twilight. With the last rays of sunlight, the temperature is more agreeable. They have to be very careful and keep a close eye out for potential predators. The European rabbit is the base of the food chain in the Mediterranean ecosystem. The species at the top of the trophic pyramid depend on them for their survival. Eagles, lynxes, and eagle owls are always on the lookout in areas populated by rabbits. And, of course, genets also eat rabbits, above all the young ones. Hunger is a bad counselor, and the young male tries to catch one of the rabbits without taking the proper precautions. The hunter has been hunted. An eagle owl was after the rabbits, but it saw an opportunity and didn't hesitate to capture the inexperienced Janet. The young female, unaware of her brother's misfortune, continues with the arduous task of finding some food. The little bird she caught at sundown wasn't enough to quell her hunger. Janets have a very fast metabolism and need to eat often at night in order to be able to make it through the day while hiding in their dens. Without knowing it, the young Janet is gradually approaching another of the great nocturnal hunters, a western barn owl. Nevertheless, the barn owl is looking for other types of prey. The Janet doesn't form part of its diet. Barn owls, among other nocturnal birds of prey, control the mice populations. A single barn owl can catch about five mice a night, and when it's mating season, that number rises spectacularly so it can feed its chicks. The silence of the barn owl's beating wings means that their prey never know that death is approaching. The night is coming to an end. Our Janet, which hasn't managed to catch anything else, resigns herself to chewing on the blackthorn and some lichens in its branches. Unfortunately for our protagonist, her hunger will stay with her throughout the day. But now she's got to seek shelter to hide from the sunlight and the eyes of the daytime predators. Life in the Mediterranean forest isn't easy for its inhabitants. Not very far from there, a fox also decides to look for some place to rest.
With the first light of day, the noisy Iberian magpies begin their daily activities, and the fox has no desire to put up with these raucous neighbors. Although the Iberian magpie is a small member of the crow family, these graceful birds with lovely plumage have nothing in common with the rest of the corvids in the Mediterranean forest. Common ravens, carrion crows, and western jackdaws are more robust, and their feathers are black with a metallic sheen. Iberian magpies are the subject of a mystery that still hasn't been resolved. They live in only two places in the world that are thousands of kilometers apart, Eastern Asia and the southwestern Iberian Peninsula. No one knows yet why they are distributed this way. Iberian magpies are tremendously adaptable. They eat all kinds of foods, from seeds to fruits. They love to feast on insects, and they don't turn their noses up at disposing of any dead animal remains they come across. They live in large flocks and go everywhere together, even when they bathe. And that's when they're most vulnerable. That's why there are always lookouts in the group, which if danger appears, sound the alarm to warn their companions. The most relaxing time of the day is when they bathe. A good bath and a good preening are fundamental to keeping their feathers clean and in perfect condition. A shout of alarm and all the members of the flock quickly flee in search of some place safe to hide. Even this griffin vulture is startled, unaware that he is the reason the magpies bolted. The vulture only intended to quench his thirst in the pond where the little magpies were bathing. Fortunately, everything returns to normal. As the hours go by, the sun gradually heats up relentlessly. In the Mediterranean forest, few are able to stand the midday temperatures. The heat is no problem for the oscillated lizard, however. The oscillated lizard is the largest European lizard, reaching a length of more than 80 centimeters. And reptiles love to sunbathe, as that's how they get the energy they need to be more active.
This male has detected a threat overhead in the sky and has to stop sunning himself for a while. A western marsh harrier is prowling around the area and it would be a good idea to take cover. Marsh harriers eat lizards. When the danger is gone, he reappears in the company of a female, but he won't relax until he's checked that there's nothing menacing on the horizon. Evening is approaching, and although it's not time yet for the nocturnal animals to leave their hiding places, our leading lady, the young female Janet, decides to emerge from her lair. She's hungry, as last night she only managed to catch a small bird, and she needs to eat something fast. Near her den, next to a rocky wall, there's a fig tree. Small in size and looking more like a dense bush than a tree, this fig will provide a safe haven for our young Janet during the few hours of daylight left. No predator would dare enter its tangled mesh of branches. Fig trees grow spontaneously on rocky terrains where few other plants can take root. And although they're common throughout the whole Mediterranean basin, the fig tree originally comes from Asia. For thousands of years, figs have been an important food for humans, who transported this tree from its natural habitat in order to keep another nutritional resource close at hand. But humans aren't the only ones who eat figs. Many animal species are used to feasting on them. And Janets adore sweet figs. In late summer, the figs start to ripen, and our protagonist, with her keen sense of smell, seeks out the ones that are already ripe and quickly stuffs herself. She has to fill her belly in case the hunt doesn't pay off tonight.
A few figs are enough. She doesn't want to get a bellyache either. It's better to go in search of proteins that will satisfy her hunger for a good long while. But she has to take precautions. One never knows where danger might lie. And the hunter could become the hunted. The rabbit trails are quite recent in this clearing in the forest. Suddenly, she sees a silhouette in the distance, and her instinct tells her that she's got to get out of there quickly. Our young protagonist was lucky, and she'd prefer to look for some distracted bird in the tangled foliage than risk her life in the clearings in search of some little rabbit. Janet's like places with denser vegetation. There's barely any light left, and the birds have settled in for the night. Now is the time to find some supper. The first rays of sunlight are making their appearance, and our protagonist hasn't eaten a thing all night long. She's got no choice but to keep looking, even though it may be dangerous for her to move about in the daylight. her hungry stomach a little. Our Janet has caught a young oscillated lizard that was warming up in the sun's rays. 
Fortunately for her, the lizard still hadn't gathered enough energy to scamper off, and so he's ended up becoming her breakfast. Our Janet likes to eat without anyone bothering her. Janets have been with us for more than 2,000 years, and they have demonstrated that they are able to adapt to any ecosystem. With their extremely flexible bodies, Janets are nimble and silent hunters that pounce on their prey in a show of precision and feistiness. Our young protagonist has been lucky so far. Up to now, she's managed to pass all the tests that have crossed her path. Nonetheless, she'll have to stay alert because the tiniest mistake could be fatal. In the Mediterranean forest, only the strongest and best adapted survive. Fortunately for her, she's got the tools necessary to give her a good chance at survival. She's astute, agile, and destined to be a winner. She's the spotted lady with a flexible body and elegant demeanor, an intrepid hunter. She is the Queen of the Night. <laughs>